Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reactions module. This is video number 14 looking at Gibbs Free Energy. This is one of these tricky concepts and something that we will try and look at very briefly now before we go into it in a little bit more detail in the first of our HSC topics where we look a little bit more at the concept of chemical equilibrium. For now, what we do know about reactions is that we've been trying to figure out ways of determining whether or not reactions are going to be spontaneous. Now we have done that in a number of different ways. Uh, we've looked at activation energy, we've also looked at uh, galvanic processes. We know that there are two very important concepts that are part of our determination of uh, at least classifying uh, different types of chemical processes. The first is about the degree of order or entropy in the system. So reactions can increase or decrease entropy based on the type of products that may be produced, whether they're solids, liquids or gases, can affect the degree of entropy and also um, whether they are producing large molecules or small molecules. So um, increasing or decreasing in order is one way of classifying chemical reactions. The other way is on the basis of heat. So we also know, for example, um, chemical reactions which absorb heat are going to be endothermic reactions, and those that release heat are going to be exothermic reactions. And of course, that heat that's being lost or uh, released uh, to the environment can be taken up by something else, so we can use the heat generated in a combustion reaction, which is released to be taken up by something like water, increase the temperature of the water. Now, while Gibbs free energy is a um, concept, a mathematical concept that's based on these two very important concepts of entropy and uh, enthalpy, which is, should highlight that specifically for the second of those processes, the relationship between these two, again, can't be done by direct measurement. They have to be done by uh, measuring the changes that occur. So whilst we could write this formula as G is equal to H minus T S, that would assume we had some way of directly measuring the quantities of Gibbs free energy, Gibbs free, uh, H being enthalpy, enthalpy, and uh, T is obviously temperature in Kelvin, and S is the entropy. Because we can't do that directly, we need to measure change, and that is what is important. So there are a couple of very important things to notice, and one of the ways of, I guess, tr trying to represent this is to look at the diagram that I've included here on this particular uh, video. You can see if I draw a tangent, not very good tangents, but tangents at uh, any point on this particular line, what you will find is that they will have up until... Uh, point that's marked 3, a negative value, they will be negative. That is the Gibbs function uh, will have the change in the Gibbs function will be a negative value going from a large value to a smaller value. This negative value for Gibbs, negative G, uh, being uh, less than 0 is an indicator of a spontaneous reaction. What that's telling us, of course, is if the delta G value is greater than zero, then it's not spontaneous. So uh, you can see in this region, if I try and draw like mini tangents, which is not easy, but you kind of get the point, um, is the delta G values here greater than zero, and these are non-spontaneous. But what is happening at three? At three, the delta G value is zero. And at delta G equals zero, we have a particular type of um, chemical uh, phenomenon that's occurring and it's called equilibrium. If you think about any reaction as being a, uh, the green region here is a forward reaction and this brownish region here is a reverse reaction. So we know that when we write uh, reactions, we go from reactants to products. But we could also consider chemical reactions as going from products to reactants. Uh, reactants. 
And it's true to say that if we find that the value of a, a forward reaction in this case, if you like, is non-spontaneous, then we're probably going to find that the reverse reaction will be spontaneous. Uh, this is, um, I guess, reflected in this graph below, but it's also telling us something very important about the fact that there can be a point where the rates of both the forward and the reverse reaction are occurring at uh, an equal um, rate. And that is a point uh, that we refer to as chemical equilibrium. It means both reactants and products are present and both are forming each other at the same rate. It doesn't mean we have an equal amount of each, but it does mean that the rate of each of these reactions is the same. And this is something that we'll look at a little bit later on. For now, what's important is that you can use this equation to do some calculations, and obviously that's something that we're going to be asking you to do in a classroom, and good luck with those. Thanks for watching.